What's up YouTube peeps and barbecue freaks? Thank you guys for joining me today. Today's video, we are going to do a boneless rib sandwich. Similar to the McRib, it's not a copycat of the McRib from McDonald's, but it's similar. You, you get the idea, we're gonna cook a uh, rack of ribs, we're gonna remove the bones, cut it up, and turn it into a sandwich. This is gonna be good. I'm gonna show you guys how I, the techniques that I use to get the bones removed and keep the whole rack of ribs intact. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Uh, I got a little over three pound rack of baby back ribs. You do not wanna use spares for this. I've used both. What I have found with the spares is that you end up with you know, the cartilage on the end where the rib tips are at. Some of that, even when you cut the rib tips off, seems to stay on there. So uh, I, I found that when I use baby backs, that's not a problem. So we're gonna go with baby back ribs. Uh, we're gonna get these prepped get them on the Weber kettle using the slow and sear uh, this is gonna be interesting it's gonna be fun I think you guys are gonna enjoy it let's get started all right so here I have a rack of baby backs again these are um, just slightly over three pounds we are going to remove the membrane from the back this is a must if you're gonna remove these bones I think it's a must whether you're cooking ribs or not, but that's just me regardless of what you're doing with them Always remove the membrane in my opinion Get these Get the rest of this off here And I'm just gonna you know, at the bottom here, I'm actually going to cut off this last rib. Where is it at? There you go. I'm not going to need it. Um, it's just a little more easier to, easier to manage, but you leave it on if you want. I'm just choosing to cut it off. So, I'm going to do very little trim work. That's just a little bit of that excess um, membrane. So on the meat side here, there's some fat. This is a little hard, so I wanna make sure I remove this fat. You know, just any fat that you see that you don't like, feel free to remove it. You shouldn't have to remove a whole lot. But just depends on the rack of ribs. Like this, I could probably leave on. I'm just going to go ahead and trim a little bit. And I think that's all I'm going to do right here. So that's all I'm going to do to the top of the rib. Now we're going to flip it back over. And I'm going to show you how I remove these bones, how I prep these bones to get them removed. All right, so I have the membrane removed. I trimmed off, you know, what I want trimmed off. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a knife and we're going to come along each side of the bone and I want to cut, make a little slit right on the side of the bone. I'm not going all the way through the rib. I'm maybe, I'm not even going halfway actually on this uh, slit. I'm just going just a little bit here as you can see that just to kind of expose that bone. Do the same to this one and just cut along both sides of the bone. Again, don't go all the way through. Don't even go halfway through. You just want to go just real lightly. On each side of the bone. And I'll hold this up in just a minute so you can see it a little better once I get them all done. But if you go all the way through, or halfway through, or a little more than halfway through, you're going to run the risk of these splitting and, and you know breaking apart. So as you, I mean, if you can see how thick this is, I'm not I'm not even halfway through there. If you can make that out, so. And as they cook, you know it's it's going to this this meat is going to uh, restrict and break away from that bone. So you don't have to go too deep. Same thing on this side all the way down the entire rack so let me get these finished up and then i'll show you what it looks like once i have them all done all right so i've got the ribs trimmed up 
you can see if I bend it this way, you can see all the little slits that I made on each side, on um, both sides of each bone, all the way down the entire rack. Again, don't go all the way through. Just make a, you know, a, a slight slit on each side. And at this point, we're gonna cook it like we would a regular rack of ribs. I'm going to season this with a, um, a Texas Best SPG rub. Michael Petrie over at Heaven Made Products is working on a, a SPG, a ultimate SPG. This is a test batch that he sent me. So we're gonna use that as the first layer. Now I will say I have used it and uh, a few times. And it's actually really, really good. And he's also working on a new rib rub. This is a test batch that he sent me to try out. So these are the two rubs that we are going to use. I'm not gonna use a binder. We're just gonna get this seasoned up. You guys know that I always use my SPG as my base. And um, uh, Michael wanted to make one for me to, to use and try out. So that's gonna re replace what I use for now. But that's not out of the norm. And we're gonna come back with that other rib rub. This is a real savory uh, rib rub. It has, it actually has quite a bit of flavor to it. Um, he sent me two batches uh, that are slightly different and I like this one a little more. So let's just get this rub down. And then um, we're gonna let it sit for a little bit, let that rub sit in sweat in and then I'm gonna flip it over probably about 10-15 minutes flip it over and then rub down the other side all right so the bottom side has been dusted we're gonna come back with the top side again we're using that first layer is gonna be the um, SPG the test bats that uh, Michael Petrie over at Heaven Made Products sent me just the smell of this God, that smells so good then we're gonna come back with this new rib rub that he's working on give this a good coating so we're gonna let this sit here let it sweat in for a little bit and then um, we'll head out we'll get the Weber kettle and the smoking or the uh, uh, slow and sear set up, get it fired up, ready to go. It's supposed to rain, so I had to move my kettle to my front porch. That might affect the wind flow because I got my walls from the house blocking it. But um, I'm going to attempt to monitor the. Um, uh, I'm going to attempt to monitor the temp on the pit. My guess is that it's going to run really low, just because there's there's not a lot of wind hitting it. Like I said, it's it's you know in the corner of my front house my porch so you know the, the wind is being blocked but we'll see um i'm reckoning it a cook at about 225 a little lower than i would like but you know it's not going to hurt it so anyway we're gonna let this sit in we'll head outside in a bit get the weber uh set up fired up and then i'll pick back up once we get these on are right, you guys i got my um slow and steer set up i've got 12 lip briquettes here I'm going to go in and fill in the rest with unlit and I'm going to add some, I've got some uh, pecan wood chunks that I'm going to use for smoke and then we'll get the ribs on. Let me finish get this set up and then we'll get the ribs on. There you go, we got the ribs on, um, got the basket filled up. I'm going to add some water to the reservoir here in just a minute, but I got the wood chunks underneath the charcoal. I am going to try to monitor the temp here. I'm going to use my Ingbert thermometer to uh, to monitor the temp of the pit. Um, right now I've got the bottom vents all the way open, but I'm about to shut those down halfway and then the top vent about halfway. We're gonna start with that, see where it gets us. Um, being that, you know, I'm up against, like I said, the corner of my house, it's supposed to rain, it's blocking a lot of the wind. So my guess is that I'm gonna have to leave these vents open more than normal. So we'll see, I'll play around with that, but I'm gonna try to keep it at about 250 and, um, about the hour mark, I'll start spritzing with apple juice and I'll pick back up once we get to that point. I'll show you really quickly, the temperature is 264. We're one hour in and the temp has actually been sitting um, between 260 and 270 the entire uh, first hour. So we're gonna uh, take a look at these ribs 
and give them a spritz. I'm simply going to use apple juice for the spritz. All right, so this is what they're looking like an hour in. It's definitely, you can use some spritz in. So I've actually got a, this is a 50-50 mix of apple juice and apple cider vinegar. So, so make sure we give them a good spritz. And I'm also gonna give these ribs a, um, a turn, I'm gonna rotate them. So that should be good here. And I'm just going to rotate the rack. I wanna make sure that I get some even cooking and I should have worn gloves for this because it's hot. <laughs> oh well. Ooh, 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 doggy. There you go. Just rotate them every hour as well. Just make sure we get even cooking and you know one side doesn't take the brunt of the heat. So we're gonna get the lid back on and we'll check back in an hour. All right, you guys, so these ribs have been going for about two and a half hours on the Weber kettle. They've got some nice color. Um, I think it's gonna be time to wrap. We're getting some pullback here on the bone. So what I've done here is I went ahead and just laid out my usual um, butter, honey, I, uh, turbinado sugar, and a little bit of tiger sauce. So I'm just gonna take these ribs lay it right down on top and I'm simply going to repeat the process on these ribs just gonna come back with you know some more butter and some honey uh, where did I put my honey honey oh I got it right here you know we're gonna add some more honey and just kind of repeat the process on this back side butter, honey, some turbinado sugar, and um, a little bit of tiger sauce. I have a package of the turbinado sugar, so, you know, we'll put some of that on the back side. And then we'll get it wrapped up. We're gonna put it right back on the Weber kettle, which has been running consistently between 260 and 270 the entire cook. So I'm pretty happy about that. Or I'm, you know, that works for me. So let me get this finished up. Again, just some brown sugar, honey, uh, or turbinado sugar in this case, but you can use brown sugar. That's what I normally use. I just happen to have some turbinado sugar that I'm using today. So brown sugar, honey, butter. Um, in fact, on this back side, I'm, instead of tiger sauce, I'm just gonna go with some barbecue sauce right over the top you use whatever sauce you like I'm gonna get these wrapped up and get them back on the Weber kettle and let them finish off at the current temp that the pit is running you know 260 to 270 uh, we're gonna check these in about 45 minutes so and be careful when you're wrapping I don't know if you can see it but right here at the bottom I already tore a little piece so I'm not happy about that but oh well that's why I double wrap it so we're gonna get these back on and check them in 45 minutes all right you guys these ribs have been uh, on the pit for an hour wrapped I did check them at the 45 minute mark and I felt like they needed to go just a little bit longer. So I let them go another 15 minutes and we're gonna see what they look like. Oh yeah. See that pullback on the bones? Well, that's definitely more pullback than there was at the uh, 15 minute mark, or the uh, 45 minute mark. So letting it go an extra 15 minutes definitely helped. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these ribs cool down just a bit and I'm actually going to it's got some nice color there I'm actually going to apply some uh, just a small or a light layer of sauce on top and I'm not gonna put them back on I'm just gonna let let them sit like that for a little while and then once we put them in the sandwich I'm gonna top it with some more barbecue sauce anyway so um, <clears throat> there's really no need to let it set but I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of sauce I'm using some sauce that 
I got from uh, my buddy Chris last weekend when I was in Lubbock. So this is a sauce he used on his pork butt for our turn in, which I thought was really, really good. Since we got pork ribs, why not use it on this? So, pat it. And then we're just going to let it sit for about, probably about 10 minutes. We'll flip it over and uh, get the bones removed. So, we're going to let this rest for about 10 minutes and then I'll pick back up in just a bit. All right, you guys. So, I got the ribs here. Uh, I did sauce the bottom side with that honey, brown sugar, butter uh, mix that I wrapped them in. And at this point, we're simply going to, I'm gonna take a little knife and carve away some of the skin on the back of the ribs. But just gonna expose this bone and it should come right out, as you can see there. There you go. Mm, mm, mm good let's get the rest of these bones look see that one just came right out and just twist it at the end and it should come right off so the thing same thing should happen to the the rest of these ribs you might have to this meat on the back side scrape it off some but this bone will release right from that rib meat you can see here and that'll come right off so i'm going to get the rest of these bones removed and then i'll flip it over take a look at it and uh make some rib sandwiches stick around all right you guys i have the rack of ribs here all the bones are removed the rack is still intact. There are a couple of pieces where um, the bone was like really close to the top of the rib that you can see here, but that's fine. For the bun, I've got a King's Hawaiian bun. I love the sweetness of these buns. I think it's gonna go perfect with ribs. And I'm simply going to cut off a piece here. All the bones have been removed. I'm just gonna cut off a piece here. I'm gonna take this piece of rib and lay it right over the top let me get this out of the way let, let me uh, get the ribs out of the way clean this up a little bit and then we'll finish the sandwich all right so I got the bun I got the boneless rib on top I'm gonna take some of that sauce and this sauce is actually I mixed the sauce with that honey and brown sugar mixture that I wrapped it in so I mixed the sauce with that sugar um, butter mixture Oh man, right over the top. It's going to be a messy sandwich, you guys, but it's going to be good. I'm going to come back and top it with some pickles. It's a regular dill pickles. Now, I am not a fan of raw onion, so I would not be adding raw onion to this, but you can definitely add onion on top. I'm not doing it. You can. And get the bun right on top. And that is it. We're gonna give this bad boy a taste, you guys. All right, you guys, we're gonna give this boneless rib sandwich a taste. <laughs> it's gonna be messy, but it's gonna be good. Cheers. Mm. <clears throat> that's good I'm definitely picking up the smoke flavor I love that that barbecue sauce is sweet which I like and it goes perfect with the pork I like the pickles on top of the crunch from the pickles and then of course the bun you know the sweet Hawaiian bun it's a sweet bun it's just it's just excellent this is a good good sandwich so if you guys ever wanted to make a boneless rib sandwich, I just showed you the technique that I use to remove the bones. Give it a shot. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to finish the sandwich. I will see you guys next time. Take care.